7.21c here we go let's break down let's go over what is strong what is not so strong what i think is broken what is not broken and just in general what you should be looking out for in this new patch now is it a huge patch no but i think ice frog did a pretty good job on touching on what is broken so let's break it down i'm not going to go over every hero i'm going to try to make this as short as possible just to cover the main points or at least what is seemingly the most important parts of the patch so let's get into it but before I go into the video and break down the patch, I just want to say that if you want to know how to apply all the changes properly and know how to play heroes to the best of your ability, you should check out GameLeap.com. We have thousands of guys that will help you do exactly that. But now let's get into the video. So first off, I do want to talk about the general change. There's only one of them, but it is XP earned when being denied is increased from 30 to 35%. And what this means is that when you get denied, you get more XP than previously. Now, this isn't a huge change. It is only 5%. However, what I think Dota is moving towards is back to tri lanes and having a solo offlaner. And that's because denies are quickly becoming not that bad, right? In the past, if you let your offlaner solo, the enemy safe laner would get XP, completely destroy them. They'd be two levels ahead, even if they didn't get any kills. It was a complete mess, but Dota has quickly shifted away from that, and I think it is going to continue down this path. And for that, teams like EG have really been putting S4 alone in the majority of games, and I think for good reason. So definitely keep your eyes open for that in the future. Next up, Hanamitis. Can't ignore Hanamitis. Another 20 gold decrease. Now, I think this item still will be purchased simply because it gives 40 attack speed. The problem about this meta right now, or maybe not the problem, but the thing about it is that strength heroes benefit so much from attack speed, and 40 attack speed is just so high. Getting XP and extra gold in addition to having a 40 attack speed buff is hard to pass up. It's just really, really hard to pass up. Now, I think the item that could have replaced Hanomitis and maybe was a nice change was drums, but they actually nerfed drums. So I really think a lot of strength heroes are going to continue buying Midas simply because it is hard to pass up 40 attack speed in addition with all the other benefits that it gives, regardless of the fact that it only gives 160 gold now. It's just, I don't think it's replaceable by another item currently, and for that, I don't believe it's going to get phased out. <laughs> Next up, we're going to skip over Abaddon because that hero is still complete trash, but let's look at Alchemist. At level 1, that's all you really need to know. At level 1, you... Your radius has gone from 400 to 475. Now, this is really important because it can cover the majority of the mid lane, which is actually one of the bigger nerfs that phase them out. So, I think we will see Alka in the future. I actually think this hero has a lot of potential, potentially with the Midas build, as crazy as it sounds. You benefit a lot from the attack speed, and you can snowball extremely quickly. So, I don't like to support Midas. Not a fan of the item, really, but... I, I do think Alchemist has a lot of potential and wouldn't be surprised if he comes into the meta in the future. Now, next we have AA. Um, AA actually didn't receive two huge of changes, but however, what I want to say is that one second on Ice Blast is quite nice. But I actually talked about AA in the video where I talked about heroes that I think need to be buffed, and I think his laning stage needs to be buffed, and it just wasn't. So for that, um, I think the hero's still dead. Same thing with Abaddon. Their, their lanes just weren't changed, so the heroes are still not nearly as good as they need to be. Looking at Bounty and Brood, I'm just going to pair them together. They both received agility changes. Now, I don't think these agility changes really changed the heroes too much. Now, Bounty Hunter did get nerfed by quite a bit, right? 0.5. Um, however, the hero still provides a lot of the same values. He still can get near max movement speed, which is phase boots drums. And for that, I think the hero is still really, really strong, especially as a mid laner. Broodmother did get a buff in terms of agility, but I think the problem with the hero is that the spiders are not nearly as strong as they used to be. In fact, they're so weak that any melee hero can buy two south shields and lane against Brood with no problem. So um, definitely don't think the hero is quite good. Chen, however, did receive a very notable buff in which your damage is now 12 to 8 at level 1 at least. In fact, it keeps going, getting to the point where from 48 to 32. Now, this is a big, big deal, right? Because pairing it with heroes such as Jug or Troll or PA, it's significantly worse. It slows down the farming by quite a bit. However, it didn't change much on putting it on creeps. So it's still really good with creeps, uh, which is kind of weird. I think they're, they're really just trying to push this towards an ability that helps you push towers with creeps. Uh, which I think is interesting. Definitely a proper change, and I really like the way he's going about fixing Divine Favor, because it is a really, really potent spell. Next up, I think one of the biggest buffs of the patch, actually, is Death Prophet. Now, the cast point on the sounds is really, really, really good, actually. Um, 0.1 seconds isn't a lot. However, 
This spell just has such a bad cast point that any buff to it is nice. But the biggest change is the level 1 Crypt Swarm from 105 to 85. Pretty much what this means is that you'll be able to cast one or two more in the laning stage for CS, which makes a big difference in the mid lane. It's similar to Storm Spirit getting a 100 mana to 70 mana change. It is a big deal. And for that, I think Death Prophet might not come into the meta unless the meta changes, but I think the hero overall is a lot, a lot better. Next up, we have Elder Titan. So Elder Titan, I, I really don't know how to feel about this change, actually, because he still receives a ton of damage from heroes. However, what is to be noted is that maxing it out is still very effective, right? You didn't necessarily want to max it out. You wanted to leave it at two points. And what I'm expecting is to still see people leave it at two points, simply because seven damage from creeps is quite good. Pretty much means that even when you get stacks, you're still going to be able to build up like 100 damage or something crazy. Next up, I think, is the biggest change of the patch. Literally, I, I haven't seen such a big nerf in a while. Honestly, this is easily one of the hardest nerfs of the last 10 patches. And you might be surprised, right? Um, it doesn't look like a big deal. Tidebringer no longer provides a bonus on denies. If you aren't familiar with the hero, you might overlook this change. But at least in the high MMR bracket, up to whatever MMR, this is game-changing. A lot of teams even recently that I've played against have been picking Kunkka offlane simply because you can deny creeps. However, Kunkka mid heavily relied in many matchups on denying the enemy mid laner. The strength of the hero was that you could use the Tidebringer and use the bonus damage you've received from it to get denies. And that's just no longer the case. The hero is just a mediocre laner now. It's just mediocre. It doesn't, it doesn't have the presence it used to. Believe it or not, one of the main reasons Kunkka was actually a top tier mid in my mind and the reason I put him in my video that I made yesterday is because you still can win lanes by your ability to deny creeps. And that's just no longer the case. So I almost think this hero is somewhat dead. I'm sad to say it. I, I think if it's anything, it's a support. But even then, you can't deny creeps as a support now. So I, I don't know how to feel about this. Next is Lifestealer. Uh, I only want to talk about it because I think it's not a big deal. I was going to ignore it, but it's life stealer, so I feel like I have to talk about it. But yeah, all I want to say is that I don't think it's a big deal. This change just doesn't change that much. Moving on, we have Luna. Now Luna is just getting a beam on Herald. Pretty much what they're trying to do is incentivizing Lunas to max beam again, because what was happening was every single Luna was maxing W and E, simply because you would farm fast. And if you maxed your beam or put points in it, it would really hurt your farming efficiency. So what they're trying to do is give you a good reason to max your beam out. And I think it's a good start. However, um, I wouldn't be surprised if only support Lunas really still maxed the beam. Next up is Meepo. Now, I think Meepo could easily be overlooked um, simply because he only re receives stat changes. But stat changes for Meepo um, are a huge deal, right? The hero relies on stats very heavily. So receiving a change to his agility and strength, both being buffs, actually really might help the hero and um, is a good start. Next up we have Monkey King and the change for Monkey King is that he is no longer able to dodge every single spell. The hero was just ridiculous in the sense that it could just dodge everything. Uh, it didn't make a lot of sense. You just couldn't cast certain spells on it for whatever reason because it just had a 20 second man to dodge. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't make a lot of sense, but now you can become immune to damage, which essentially means that you probably can dodge right clicks, which means that you most likely cannot be targeted during the small duration. However, if a projectile is already coming at you, it will hit you. The next change I want to go over is the saddest thing I've ever seen. Um, I'm going to be holding a funeral on the 5th of March, so if you'd like to attend, we'll be hosting it in Bermuda. And we're just going to be saying our, our prayers to for Nature's Prophet. It's just so sad. I, I don't know why they had to do this to my boy, but I guess I'll move on. The change was that train damage has been reduced from 36 to 27 at level 1, which overall means that he loses 18 damage from trains in total. And this is a huge deal. It makes your denying a lot worse. It makes your harass a lot worse. It makes support profit significantly worse. And um, do I think the hero still has value? Of course it does. It's Nature's Prophet. He's the best guy you'll ever know in Dota. He's the nicest guy you'll ever know. His treants, they're the cool people too, right? You, you'll get along if you get to know him. Um, but this change really does hurt him, so unfortunate. Pangolier is one of the strongest heroes of the patch, in my opinion, and it will be of this patch too. I don't think these changes hurt him that much. However, what is 
interesting about the change is that Shadow Demon can make illusions of Pangolier and they would silence him. So actually it almost buffs Pangolier in a sense where your own illusions can't silence, but if they make an illusion of you, such as a Darkseer wall or a Shadow Demon illusion, it can no longer silence you. So that's pretty good. And the other change was that Lucky Shot Slow has been reduced, but only by 5%, so I don't really think it matters. The hero is still super, super good, and I would recommend learning him if you haven't already. Next up, a cool change that will hopefully revive this dead carry, which is Phantom Lancer. Actually, I take it back. Please let this hero just sit in his grave. He can really comfort Nature's Prophet down there, and I think it's really nice if those two can get along in the grave, because the hero's cancer. But what they did was make his agility increase from 9 to 11 at level 1 and scale all the way up from 36 to 44 at the max level. Now, this is really good for the hero, especially at level 1, right? Every time you use this, you just want it to be more and more efficient, especially considering you max out Phantom Rush. Um, having a more damage and a more agility, actually, so even a more attack speed, is a huge, huge deal. Huge deal, and I think it will really help this hero make a resurgence. I don't know how much. Uh, considering a lot of the AoE damage cores really counter him hard, um, but we'll have to see. Next up, we have Shadow Fiend. Now, the hero last patch, if I'm not mistaken, received a one strength buff uh, from base strength, and now he received another two, which means that he has received a total of 60 HP from level one, which is massive. 60 HP is a ton. It's actually so much. It's a full two right clicks in many situations. Uh, in the landing stage, which really can get you first blood or not. Yeah, I, this is like a great quality of life change for, for uh, Shadow Fiend. In fact, I shouldn't even call it a quality of life change. It's just a big buff to the hero. So, all right. I, I don't like playing against Shadow Fiend. It's super scary in lane. However, this will really help it. Next up, we have Sniper. Sniper received... Um, I don't even know where to put it. It's kind of weird. Um, the shrapnel replenish rate is really, really nice. It's actually quite notable because it's charge um, based. So five seconds is a big deal. Um, and the headshot damage at level one is actually very good too. 10 damage will help you last hit if you get lucky and will help you harass. So pretty nice changes. Uh, I don't think Sniper is viable um, simply because it still just gets jumped and Shrek uh, anyway. But it's a good start to slowly bring the hero back. I would like to see it get back at some point. I think it's an interesting hero. Next up, we have Spear Breaker, and he received a health regen buff. Now, health regen buffs on strength heroes like Spear Breaker are great because it really helps them stay on the map and continue pressuring lanes. That's all I got to say about Spear Breaker. Next up, we have Storm Spirit, and Storm Spirit, for the longest time, had the Electric Vortex slowing him for 50% when he used it. It was kind of a weird aspect, but now they're getting rid of it. And in fact, they even made the cooldown of Electric Vortex 16 seconds at level 1. So now this means that Electric Vortex is a quite good level 1 spell, and I think this is what they're trying to incentivize. They're trying to incentivize you leaving Remnant at level 1, and then putting a value point into Electric Vortex. It is a loot cooldown, it gives you an overload charge, and it doesn't slow your hero. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of good reasons to take uh, Vortex, actually, at level 4 now. Next up, we have the most disgusting change of the patch, and the reason why I am actually hunting down Isrog right now. Um, I think I've located his house, so I'm on the way. Don't worry, guys. I will solve all your issues, because he has decided to buff techies. Don't know what his problem is. You know, I get it. There's techies players out there, but I don't think anyone likes them, uh, especially not Slacks. No one likes him, but what he has done is made Remote Mines cooldown reduced from 10 to 8 seconds. This is massive, right? Because you're trying to lay as many of these out as possible, and 2 seconds is a 20% increase, which, if they worded it like that, would sound like a lot. Because it is a lot. So, huge buffer techies. This will allow him to be a lot scarier more often, which is annoying as anything. So, some pretty big changes for TA as well. Uh, agility gain, which is, you know, whatever for the hero, it's pretty good. But the bigger change is that when Refraction is now maxed out, you get 20 more damage. Uh, it scales by 5 at each level, so it does even get better, even 10 damage higher at level 2, which is, I think, the more notable change. Um, out of all of it, you actually have 10 more damage at level 2, which is quite a good value point. You know, you hit level 3 pretty early in the landing stage, so... Um, yeah, this, this will make TA better, because you'll have a better presence in the landing stage. However, the hero still struggles. It lost its second Ancient Camp, so there's less stacks. Um, I think it still has problems, um, especially after the removal of the second ancient stack. So I wouldn't expect to see this hero become popular. However, people are definitely going to experiment with it. Now, coming in towards the end of the patch, we're going to go over 
Ursa, very complicated change, movement speed reduced by 5, this pretty much means that he has to buy drums now, I'm kidding, it's just a mm, movement speed nerf, which is a good start, now the hero is not as broken, still good, still good, still very good, still very good, it will run at like what, 2, 3, 328 movement speed right now, still really fast, top tier move runner, he is definitely an Olympian, um, but moving on to Viper, just made a video about Viper, it's doing super well, thank you guys by the way, for all the support on that video, however, let's go over what they've done to hopefully take some of the sting out of Viper's poison. So first they gave him an agility gain reduction, quite notable, uh, definitely good. We'll make this hero have to go into a magic build even more so. Another toxin AOE damage no longer stacks with itself. In fact, I didn't even know this. This is how sad this is. I didn't even know the damage stacked with itself. Turns out if you had two down, it stacked, which made it farm even faster. And I somehow didn't know that. Okay. Glad they got rid of that, I guess. <laughs> Next change is that uh, the Nether Toxin mana cost has been quote-unquote increased. However, at level 1, it's only 70 mana, so you can still use it in the early laning stage. It's only 5 mana more at level 2, which means you can still jungle with it at level like 2. However, um, what is notable is that when it's maxed out, it is 100 mana, which is 25 mana higher and for a spell that is only five second cooldown that is a big big deal so what i'm expecting people to do is now pick cm with it solve your problems and still have this broken hero i think viper is still deadly as ever um but the final change is that poison attack slow is now 10 percent at level one and instead of 25 it is not nearly as good of a value point so similar to the replay that i went over on the game leap website where ccnc maxed out his q just what's important to note is that maxing out poison attack is better now simply because at level one it is not great if you're just looking to farm like previously you know you can still max out skin however if you want to rotate you really have to max out poison now or else it's just a really bad level one spell so yeah what i would say about viper is the hero is still really really strong if you're playing it in pubs and you just want to ruin people's day like ever pick it with cm um and yeah that i i don't think it's that bad i really think you can still ruin games with viper so so my video is still pretty good and finally, we have Wind Ranger. This is also a hero I talked about in the heroes I think needs to get buffed. However, I suggested very huge buffs. Um, Ice Frog doesn't really like to do that, so I understand that it is most likely not going to happen. I also understand that uh, my idea on changes are probably wrong for the most part. However, what he tried to do is buff the cooldown for Shackle Shot, two seconds lower at every level. Pretty nice. Pretty, pretty nice. Especially at max. And the attack speed for focus fire has been buffed as well. Now, it's only by 25, and I really don't think this is going to bring the hero back. Um, if anything, the only thing I think this will incentivize is Wind Ranger support, which I think is decent. I don't think it's great, but who knows? Maybe GH will pick more Wind Ranger support, because I actually have seen him play recently. So, that's going to wrap up a gameplay update 7.21c. I don't think this changes the meta that much, to be perfectly honest. Definitely just a... A balancing patch i think dota is actually in a very balanced state right now i don't think there's really a lot of outliers in terms of heroes however viper and life stealer uh even pango are still top tier in my opinion if i was you i would expect to see a lot of them and continue playing them because they are still super super strong so thank you guys for watching if you did enjoy please do like and subscribe to help our channel grow comment down below if you think i skipped any important changes like ricky getting five movement speed actually that one's pretty good there you go i threw it in now so you can't complain and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video